It's so fun to be here. It's it's really fun for me to be in a place that's like on the sidewalk because the very first place I ever held a meetup was kind of like this where there were people passing by and we had multiple people knock on the doors during this very technical talk asking us like what are you guys doing what is this all about and I think that kind of goes to show how strange it is to have very tech 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 meetups in Los Angeles and in downtown LA where there wasn't used there used to not be very many events at all in downtown and now it's going through this renaissance and I'm going to be talking about how I started meetups um, in LA and how that helped me kind of find a tech job in LA and kind of help others do that and not burn out and things like that so yeah so my name is Machiko Yasuda I work in product and engineering at this company called Goat and if you don't know what that means, ask, ask like a friend that's really good at like basketball or maybe sneakers because it probably doesn't mean what you think it means. Um, I used to be a journalist. Now I do software engineering. Who knows what I'll do next? I think my actual title now at work is like technical product manager, whatever that means. Um, so I got into tech in LA in 2013 when uh, Ruby... Ruby developer named Jessica Suttles organized the very first Rails Girls in LA. Um, and one of my friends, Maria, was there too. I asked her to come with me because I was so nervous. And um, maybe you can tell from the picture, but this picture looks really different from what most of the meetups in LA look like, which after I did my boot camp at General Assembly and I started going to meetups because that's what everyone tells you to do, I found out that most of the meetups in LA are like that. And these are pictures I actually got from their website. <laughs> Um, and then there was this one. I'm in here somewhere. I can't find myself, though. And I just decided after going to these meetups for a while that this is not really L.A. If you've never been to L.A., it's like 60% uh, like non-white and like not all white dudes. And I went to school. I went to public school in L.A. all my life. I went to UCLA, and I was just like, this is unacceptable. Um, I worked in journalism, and it didn't look like that, and there was no reason why tech meetups had to be like this. Um, and being the very loud, obnoxious person that I am, the first thing that I did was sign up on the Slack group of this unnamed meetup group in this unnamed programming language. And I asked the organizer, like, hey, your meetup meetups are really technical. I don't understand what's going on. Like, could we do some more talks that are more beginner oriented? Um, and then he straight up told me, uh, our group is mostly mid-level to senior developers, so don't worry about needing to cater to beginners too much. That, this is, he told me, like, I asked him for advice on how to start a meetup, and he's like, oh, let me show you the letter that I sent to all our speakers, and that, that was it. Um, yeah, that was so welcoming and so inclusive. So I decided to start my own meetup. A little intro to LA is that um, a lot of people will tell you, a lot of, like, San Francisco people maybe will tell you that the Silicon Beach of LA is just over here, which is like a really tiny portion and it's actually not even in the city of Los Angeles. It's a se separate place, Santa Monica. Um, that's where all the tech meetups are. And my friend Kit and I decided that we would start meetups all the way over here. It's only 10 miles, but it takes you like 60 minutes or more to get there by in traffic on a car. But maybe if you're taking a bus, it probably takes even longer. Um, and we had no money, no sponsors, no location sponsors, no free food, no donuts, no stickers, nothing. Um, sometimes we didn't even have really good Wi-Fi, but we still made it happen um, because we just wanted to do it. We had we put really high expectations on ourselves. We were like, we're gonna do it every every two weeks and never never take a break. And even though only like three or four people came to our first few meetups, we just kept on doing it and doing it. And we're just like, we're just gonna be here in downtown until people start kind of finding out about us. Um, and it didn't take that long for it to get really crowded and awesome. And here are some pictures from one of the meetups that I started, which is a pair programming meetup. This is in Little Tokyo, see? That's where the random people would come in and ask us about stuff. And ask us what was going on. Um, more pair programming, and then I started another meetup called Map Time um, because I was addicted to starting meetups. <laughs> and um, Map Time, I think there's a Portland one too, yeah. but Map Time's all about um, kind of teaching anyone how to make maps, not just maps online, but a lot of it's online. And so we teach like GitHub, 
HTML, JavaScript, GIS, Python, all that stuff, all using free tools. And that's been really interesting too because that's been a way we've been able to get people of all, from all sorts of industries in all different parts. So we have like people that work in government, civil engineers, architects, exchange students, all that stuff. And we have like retired people, so they don't even work anymore. <laughs> they don't have to work anymore. And they get to do fun projects and they just do side projects all day. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's math science. Um, so yeah, a lot of people will tell you maybe like it's fun to start your own coding meetup for all these kind of generic reasons. like practicing new skills, like working on a side project, meeting people, visiting companies, eating pizza, schmoozing. Someone actually, I, I try to make sure I meet every single person that comes to my meetup. And someone actually told me like he came because his mom told him to. So I guess even parents know about it now and it's like in the news or something. <laughs> I don't know, but that's a good excuse to go, I guess, listen to your mom. Um, and one very unintended side effect that I had that starting meetups in a different neighborhood had with that was that it was attracting people from all different kinds of places and we had no idea that this would happen um, this is a little geography lesson i learned that really la is not this it's all the way out here uh people come to my meetup from san bernardino county which is like a, it's like two counties over <laughs> all the way up to santa barbara kern county which one time this mining engineer came and he mines like boron in Kern County, which is like a desert, um, all the way out down to Irvine. Um, and I would always ask them, why did you come to our meetup? And then they would say, you know, it's because I can come to downtown LA, but I can't go all the way to Santa Monica, so that's why I came here. And it kind of really changed my co-organizer Kit and I's like, idea of what it means to do like a meetup somewhere where there aren't many, right? And it's like our community just, like got so much bigger. Um, yeah, that's like two hours of driving and crazy traffic. That's another one. Um, one of my one of our most one of our most uh, regular attendees takes a bus, takes two buses for two hours and forty two minutes just to get our get to our meetup. Um, like he brings this like ten year old computer that like runs everything. He's so good at installing everything and. I think I always try to make sure that I, that like, you know, if he gets something out of this meetup today, then it was all worth it, even though everything's so stressful. Um, yeah. Um, these are supposed to be little like emoji flags, but I guess Google Google changes it, and it's not as fun. But another cool thing about starting a meetup, especially in the summer when there's a lot of like, at least in LA, there's a lot of exchange students and grad students and stuff is that we were able to attract a lot of people from all different countries and people would even like come to meetups when they were just in LA for vacation. I guess meetups, meetups are really popular now and um, it's been a fun way to kind of be able to not just make like a community in your hometown but also meet people from around the world. Because one thing that I realized is that even if you can't communicate with someone in English, you can communicate with them over code. And that's one great thing about code is that even though we have so many borders, borders um, like countries and language barriers and all that stuff, is that one thing that's so great about the internet is that we can we can work on something together on our computers um, and kind of have code to be that common language. Um, so, yeah. Another thing that another unintended consequence of starting meetups is that it's been able to make me think differently about what diversity means. So I came up, I always tell people that I first started learning Ruby actually because in LA, the Ruby meetups were the most women friendly and the most beginner friendly and the most inclusive. And I think I would have totally learned a different language if it was the case that all the other meetups were that one. Um, and so at first I was always thinking of diversity in this thing of like, oh, like what are my numbers? Like how many women did we have? Or how, what's our age range? Or how, like, you know, what's, how many like women of color, or people of color do we have? And I began to realize that that's really only the first step in thinking about diversity. Um, and one thing that I've been doing in both our pair programming meetup and my, my math time meetup is thinking not just about a diverse number of people, but the kinds of, the kinds of skills that you're practicing, the kinds of ways you can learn and share that, and the kinds of spaces that you create to make this happen. Um, so one thing that Kit and I always do is that after every single meetup, we do like a five, we give ourselves exactly five minutes and no more than five minutes to retro what, what good things we did 
what good things happened and what not so good things happened, and we let ourselves kind of experiment with different things. Um, and one thing that we started doing at Full Stack is we always have Full Stack, which is the name of our pair programming app, is uh, we started doing stand up where we all get get into a circle and stand up and ask and I ask a question. Um, stand up, if you've never heard about it, is a very common practice in software development companies where you just talk about what's block, uh, mostly what's talking about what's blocking you. And going on from that, we would talk about, you know, like what's what's like the hardest thing you dealt with today or like what's what's one thing that was blocking you today. And we would let people talk about programming things and non-programming things. And that was one way we were able to figure out that a lot of a lot of the reasons why people couldn't come to the meetup was like traffic or like I had to take care of my kid or all this stuff. And that was those are little information that we were able to use to kind of make the meetup better for everyone. Um, and in map time, we we realized that one we realized that we were doing so many programming workshops, and we felt so good about ourselves because we were like, yeah, we got like D three now and QGS and all this stuff. But we realized that when we only did programming workshops, you only get a certain type of audience to come, um, and it might not be a big issue here in Portland, but in LA, one thing we realized was that it's really hard. And I was. I kind of feel the same way is that if you didn't grow up in LA with like a family that like goes hiking and does like things, does like stuff like white people like type of things, then it's really hard to get into it. And so at math time we started doing um, we started doing hikes, which was a really fun way to kind of integrate something, get people to do something that they've never done before, which might be programming for some people, but it might be hiking for some people, or it might be taking the subway together or taking the bus together, and then integrating some kind of like coding or local history with along with it. And we were able to get new people to come. We were able to do meetups at different times of the day that a lot of people couldn't come. So we could do like weekends or weekend mornings or evenings, which worked better for people that, that can't make the weeknight happen. Um, so we do hikes. We met someone, I guess this doesn't mean as much to Portland people, but one time when we did a hike in that time, we met someone that took the bus all the way from like the ocean so like Marina Del Rey, he took three, three buses basically to get to a subway station that would take him to a trailhead with another bus to get to a hike. Um, in LA, that's like a really big deal. And like those, we were just, I kind of, I joke that like my number one way of attracting people to come to my meetups are like just being on the bus and talking about programming loudly because eventually someone will ask me about it. <laughs> um, one time I was wearing like a Rails Girl sticker on my bike bicycle helmet and I was at Union Station in LA and someone actually asked me if that was like a train related meetup because he wanted his daughters to get into it but I was like no but like your daughters could get into like coding about trains at math time or something I don't know it didn't work but um, another thing that we do at math time is that we let people do all sorts of side projects that might not even be related to work or like that latest hot new thing that you're supposed to be learning and you feel FOMO about not learning. Um, it's been really cool to have, to be able to have a meetup that has people from all ages. And we realized that a lot of people, especially older people are really interested in genealogy and that data is really hard to access from libraries and whatnot. And one of our, one of our, um, one of our attendees has made a, made a Rails app of all Croatian restaurants opened in early Los Angeles because that's related to his family background. And he even blogged about us and he called us, what was it? A bunch of dedicated, interesting, mostly young people. <laughs> that he hopes to contribute to their efforts. And we get to teach him Slack and we get to teach him like all these little internet things. And it's been a fun time to just kind of share skills across generations and hear what it was like for him to work, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I think another thing that we do is give people give people time and space to synthesize their learning in different ways. And I take I'm not taking credit for this because I had nothing to do with it, but it was just things that I realized was happening at our meetup because kind of on its own by letting people happen. People have sticker trading sessions when people just like a few people had just happened to bring their plastic bags full of programming stickers all in the same day, but I didn't tell anyone to, but it turned into an impromptu sticker, sticker trading session. Um, people do like sketch notes and post-its, and these are all things that we didn't, we didn't kind of make time for, but we just 
let kind of people do their thing and like that turns into their whole cohort of other sticker things. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, um, another fun thing is that people blog about, people blog about things that they learned at the meetup. And it's, it, that's like a cool way because not only do you get, not only do you get cool blogs, but you get some like good Google, Google's uh, SEO mojo for, for your meetup. And it's, this one is what I, I call it pair, blog, pair blogging because these two people pair programmed on something and then they blogged about it, but their experiences are so different. So it's interesting to see, like for example, like, like this one CSS thing was so mind blowing to this PhD in computer science who studies machine learning, but he's never done web development before. And then this guy who's like never done programming and he gets to teach this guy something, right? Um, and I think that's another thing that's so interesting about having a meetup that we always say like we're language agnostic so you can do any languages. Um, and it's a way to kind of learn something different from someone else that kind of sees coding as a totally different way from you. Um, and another one of my favorite blog posts that came from Map, from, from Fullstack was um, someone talked about how he used, how he's been using like the programming kind of methodologies of Scrum and Agile at his work, which just happens to be a bookstore, right? Um, and, and we've been giving people kind of a chance to just kind of let people kind of come up with their own lessons of what they learned, put their own spin on it, put it up online, and then later I can ask him, you know, hey, Ian, that was like a really great blog post, like could you do a talk about it? You know, it kind of happens more organically rather than kind of asking I'm like always trying to harass people to do talks, but no one does talks. But this is kind of my way to get the ideas out there. Um, yeah. And the last thing is that it can be really overwhelming to be a meetup organizer because people are always telling you like, you should do things this way or why not try that? Um, and the way we've been, we've been able to kind of let that go is that we just, Instead of, instead of feeling the burden of having to do that all on our own, we're always just like, yeah, well, you know, we know two other people that like that idea. Why don't you guys go start that this place? We'll give you the hookups on wh where to find the good, like, community hosts or where to find a good cafe to work out of. Um, and since then, since 2014, downtown, in downtown LA and all over the east side of LA and in different counties, like Ventura County and Orange County, all of our friends have been starting their own meetups kind of based on ours, but rolling it on their own. And because our meetup is so low key and that it doesn't require any money, you don't need sponsors, you just need Wi-Fi and some tables. I think it's we've and we'll kind of give you all the like GitHub things to make it happen. We've lowered the barrier to start your own and we can help we, and we don't have to kind of go out and do it on our own. Um, and that's that's yeah, that's it. Thanks.